Okay, good morning and hello to everyone. This is Hisham Mahdi from External Affairs Office at Islamic University of Gaza. Uh, we meet again within a series of webinars on scholarship for postgraduate study. Actually, these webinars aim to introduce the entry student to the available scholarship all over the world by hosting those who had uh, received this scholarship, this scholarship to talk and discuss with us about their experience and uh, the knowledge that they gain. In, today, in today's session, actually, we are hosting guests from College of uh, Europe in Natalin. Uh, this college actually provides uh, postgraduate studies in inter interdisciplinary. And it's our pleasure today to host Mr. Uh, Manifredi, the Communication and Recruitment Officer and Dr. Email Research Fellow at the college. Actually, our friends today will help us to provide uh, information about the scholarship that the college is uh, providing for the Palestinian students. This information actually will be helpful for the students to understand the procedures, the requirements and the conditions to apply in uh, uh, this uh, college. Actually, we will start with our uh, colleague, Mr. Manfredi, to share with us his presentation regarding uh, the processes and uh, the application for uh, the scholarship. Yes, Manfredo, you can start. Thank you very much, Mr. Madi, for the, the introduction. I am uh, very happy, uh, and I think I can also speak with uh, Dr. Badali. We are very happy to be here to present the offer of uh, the College of Europe. As I was saying earlier on, we always have uh, Palestinian students uh, with us. We have uh, we had, had uh, uh, if I'm correct, uh, two uh, last year. We have one student from Gaza this year. Uh, in general, uh, the College of Europe uh, welcomes many uh, students coming from uh, the EMP, so from neighboring countries, and so of course from Palestine, Palestine as well. Uh, I would like to uh, share some slides, so I'm going to do this now. Just give me a second. Uh, maybe I just want to make sure that, are you seeing the slide, uh, Mr. Mani? Just, just one, if you can give me a sign that the slides are, are visible. Uh, no, the slides are not visible. Okay, we so, see your email. Actually. Okay, then just one second, I'm going to share. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One quick second. <clears throat> Okay, now it should be all right. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, 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 we can see your slide. Okay. Perfect. So, as okay. I was saying to, to some of you um, early on, um, we are uh, the College of Europe. We have two campuses, one in uh, Bruges, uh, a small town, a uh, very beautiful small town in, uh, in Belgium, and one in uh, Warsaw, the, the college uh, uh, we are speaking from. The, I, won't do a, I won't make a history lesson on, uh, on the college, but just to give you some, uh, some information on, on our history, uh, the college was born in uh, 1949. The first campus was established in Bruges, and the main objective was to foster uh, European integration, as of course you are aware of, uh, Europe was a shattered continent after the Second World War. And the idea of uh, the founding fathers of, uh, the, of uh, the European community, that which would uh, later become the European Union, such as founding fathers such as actually de Gasperi, Winston Churchill, uh, Salvatore de Madariaga, and so on, was to create an institution where young graduates uh, coming from uh, all over Europe, uh, but now, of course, all over Europe and the neighborhood, uh, these young graduates could uh, debate, discuss, and um, 
and uh, learn more about uh, each other and foster European integration, which was so much needed at that time. The second campus was established in 1992, uh, the campus in, uh, in Natalie, which is a district of Warsaw, with uh, this time a different objective. Uh, as you may know, uh, in the 90s, uh, uh, discussion regarding the enlargement process uh, of the European Union uh, were, uh, were very important uh, in all European affairs uh, dimension. And so the campus in Poland uh, had the objective to focus uh, a lot on the enlargement process overall. Uh, today, uh, of course, uh, the main one of the main focus uh, objective of the college is also to discuss and to talk about the European neighborhood policy, so the neighbors of the EU and in general external relations of, uh, of the EU. I will jump um, immediately on the academic pro program, maybe. You see, we have um, four programs in uh, Bruges in the Bruges campus. One is called the MA in European Political and Governance Studies, another one uh, MA in International Relations and Diplomacy Studies, an MSc in European Economic Studies, studies and an LLM in European Law. So those are four programs that uh, you have at the, in the Bruges campus. While you have one uh, program in Natalin, a bit more comprehensive, a bit bigger, because uh, we only have one here, which is the MA in European Interdisciplinary Studies. There are four different majors, but I'm going to tell you more on that in, a, in another slide. In general, you, uh, the college offers a, a program of one year. Uh, to be even more specific, it's 10 months. It's an advanced uh, master, 66 credits, and it's taught in English and in French. Uh, I will come later also on, uh, I will discuss later the language requirements, of course. There's actually uh, another a master, uh, a bit different, it's the Master of Arts in Transatlantic Affairs, uh, similar to what you call a double degree. You, uh, it's uh, a master that is taught both at the College of Europe and at the Fletcher School of Law in Boston. So you would spend uh, one year either at Natalin or either at Bruges, depends on your choice in the application, and the second year uh, at Boston. It's a, so it's a two-year program, this time 120 ECTS, and it's only taught in, uh, in English. Uh, just to uh, give you a little bit more information about uh, what we do here, what is a European dis interdisciplinary program, uh, our aim is really to teach uh, European affairs, European studies from many different uh, dimensions, also maybe uh, Dr. Badai later on can tell you uh, more about it with a more academic approach. But in general, as, as a student as well, because I was a student um, uh, three years ago, I can tell you that uh, the College of European Nathan offers really a program that uh, very diversified. You have uh, many different co courses related to uh, the European Union and Euro European affairs um, that tackle uh, thematics such as uh, you. Uh, you the UN energy dimension or uh, you foreign policy and and so on with professors who all have different expertises so it is definitely um, an interdisciplinary program because uh, you studied uh, you study everything from a different perspective I want to give you a, an insight on how the semesters really look like uh, at Nazi the first semester is divided in uh, an interdisciplinary track and a pluridisciplinary track. The interdisciplinary track is the default one. You choose it uh, by default, and it's uh, um, it's track where a uh, uh, study track where you would you you are taught uh, the basic basic uh, knowledge on uh, European affairs and on the functionment of the European uh, institutions. It is for those who uh, really want to, to know more to know more how uh, things work in uh, the European Union. However, if you already studied uh, these topics, if you already feel confident, you already had, let's say, exams, for example, in EU law or uh, uh, or on history of the European Union, 
and so on. Then you can choose the pluridisciplinary track, which is uh, more advanced, more specialized. You would already jump into uh, exams that take for granted a bit that you know uh, the basis of uh, the European Union. However, you would have to pass uh, three preliminary exams uh, in order to, um, to choose uh, the pluridisciplinary track. The second semester is where things get definitely a bit more interesting at the college because you can uh, choose between four different uh, majors. You can choose one out of four majors, EU public affairs and policies, the EU and the world, the EU and its neighbors, and European history and civilization. Uh, those majors really define your academic uh, curriculum at the college because uh, out of each of these, you can choose a different set of exams for the second semester. So it is really important to choose uh, well these majors because it, they really define your, where you want to go after the college and how, what is the, the major you want to specialize in. We are called also uh, flying faculty. As I said, we have professors coming from all over the world. Uh, we have professors, but also practitioners. So we have experts of uh, the European Union, officials coming uh, to teach, of course, their courses, but also uh, to give their, uh, their perspective on what it means to work in the European Union and what they actually do. So it's a good mix of professors, ac academia, and, uh, and practitioners. It gives a good balance in that sense for uh, an advanced master. Uh, we have a blended learning system, so we work also through e-learning platforms, which are so useful, especially now with uh, the pandemic. Outside from uh, the classical academic uh, track, uh, you can also choose uh, different workshops, seminars, simulation games. You have many different activities uh, that uh, revolve around uh, the academia but are not related to exams uh, or, or courses. You would have to write a master's thesis, of course. It's between 12,000 and 18,000 words. Now, I will just, uh, I'm going, going to go a bit quick uh, through the slides, not to take too, many, too much uh, time from you, but uh, I would just like to uh, highlight one of our exclusive uh, features, the study trips at the College of Europe and NATO. We bring students uh, to the heart of the European Union and uh, in the neighborhood and abroad in general. We have uh, two one week long study trips, one in the first semester and one in the second semester. And those are really an integral part of the academic program. We uh, we bring students in these countries, countries such as, I mean, throughout the years we've been, uh, we've been to, uh, to, to, let's say, to mention the UNP, we've been to Tunisia, we've been to uh, Georgia, Armenia, or Ukraine, you name it. And, um, and in these study trips, we bring students to uh, meetings with uh, EU embassies, with uh, uh, government officials, with NGOs, uh, with professors, we, we really uh, deliver an academic program, program because at the end of each semester, there's an exam related on the theme of each uh, study trip. Uh, you can choose uh, one in the first semester and one in the second semester, of course. We've been also, the study trip, we've been uh, in, uh, in Belgium, we've been also in Strasbourg, so we've also been in, uh, in, uh, in France. And uh, it's really a great offer you can choose out of many options. Here, uh, there are some photos of the study trips uh, we did. Um, I can recognize for sure uh, Kiev, Ukraine, but also Tunisia, uh, Bosnia in the Balkans and so on. And I think also Brussels, just some photos that you can watch. We have... Um, a language department, a very developed one, because you can choose uh, one, uh, you, you can choose two out of eight languages to study at the college. You can study Arabic, English, French, German, Italian, Polish, Russian, and uh, Spanish. You can choose two out of eight. And at the end of the year, if you pass 
uh, a language exam, you can get a certificate which is recognized worldwide, a certificate that goes from uh, the level of A1 to uh, C2. We also have a careers and a professional, de professional development uh, department that is really tailor uh, made for uh, the needs of students. We have, um, we have you know, the, the chance that we, we are not many, um, we don't have many students every year because we are an advanced master. So we have around, in Natalie, around 100, uh, uh, 137 was the maximum. Uh, we don't get much more students than that because we, we are a small uh, institution. And, um, and we have, so th this, this gives us the opportunity to really give uh, individual guidance to students from uh, career specialists from our departments, so as uh, you know, help with uh, job interviews or to write CVs and motivation letters, other than also you know, professional skills workshops for EFSA competitions, for example, or debates and so on. But also important to note uh, the networking events because we have uh, an, an alumni community, a very broad alumni community, more than 15,000 alumni between uh, the Bruges campus and the Natolian campus. It is a community uh, that is very dynamic. Uh, these people talk between each other, they exchange opportunities, and we organize also meetings with uh, former students on our campus to discuss between, you know, to create discussions between current and uh, former students. This is the quote from Maria Buric. Uh, she was uh, actually the part of the first uh, promotion at the College of Europe in Natalie, the Stephen Zweig uh, promotion, 1993, 1994. You can read the quote. The, you might ask uh, yourselves where do students uh, work after the College of Europe? Uh, you can see it a little bit from these slides. We have a 25% of our students that work after the college in the private sector, so companies, consultancies, trade associations, and so on. And uh, another 25% that work in uh, new institutions and new agencies, but also, you know, people who end up in the public sector, embassies, and diplomatic service, and, and so on. It's very diversified, especially with the interdisciplinary program. Uh, we have students really who work in many different job sectors. It is a first-class uh, academic environment. Uh, we have um, two academic chairs. Uh, actually, after these slides, I would give the floor to, uh, to Dr. Badarin, because I think it is really uh, related to his uh, work here at the college. But just to let you know, we have uh, two academic chairs, the European Civilization Chair, the European Neighborhood Policy Chair, they organize uh, events, high-level business conference, conferences and debates. And there's also uh, the Natoli Ness, parts of this chair. Uh, in in Natoli Ness, uh, the, the, the staff and students uh, work together in many different initiatives. I can tell you one, for example, the Energy and Climate Governance Nest in 2018 uh, participated in the COP24 in Katowice. And students, when they're not only as uh, passive you know, participants, but they they worked with uh, the policy delegation in uh, in uh, working papers and so on. So it's definitely something they could add in their uh, in their curriculum. So if um, if uh, Dr. Badari is okay before before uh, going to through the academic requirements and uh, and the more technical information about how to uh, study at the College of Europe, I would give the floor uh, to so, you. Thank you, Manfredi. Um, what I oh, want to say, sorry, we hear. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yes, we hear you. Okay, good, excellent. Yeah. Um, 
What's unique about Natlin in particular, our campus in Warsaw, is that as a student, you will be actually living on campus at the same, where, where you study and where you live at the same time on the campus. You will be eating there, sleeping there, and learning there in the same place. So you, essentially, you don't have actually to leave the campus if you wish to for basically a whole year. So there's no escape from learning. Learning is with you uh, basically 24 hours. And the program is actually intensive and rich and versatile. Uh, so it's a unique opportunity for, uh, for any student. And that also gives you a close contact with your um, you know, teachers or supervisors and, and so on. So that's a unique thing. And also that, that provides you an opportunity uh, to participate, to be part of lots of events that happen on campus, uh, both academic but also social events. Uh, so we, that part is also part of the learning process. There's a lot of seminars, um, lots of debates and conferences uh, almost all the time. We invite lots of uh, speakers, influential speakers, um, from many different countries um, to do it on campus. Before Now it's more difficult because of the pandemic, and now mostly online. Uh, but in the normal, um, the normal circumstances, is everything happens on campus. So it's a very rich environment for uh, anyone. Uh, moving back to the academic structure of, of what we offer in math in the European interdisciplinary uh, program of studies. Uh, again, it's made out of four majors, as far as I remember. One is the uh, EU public affairs and politics, uh, EU and the world. Then you have uh, the European civilization. And also then you have the EU and its neighbors, um, or the EMP, uh, the European Neighborhood Policy Chair, where I worked. Um, I will talk a bit about what we do in our unit. <clears throat> um, we do lots of research on the EU foreign policy, but not on the EU foreign policy, but also the, uh, the politics, the events, what's going on in the countries around the EU, both uh, in the Middle East, but also in Eastern Europe and uh, other countries too. So that's what mainly what we do. Uh, our research is published in major international journals and books, uh, uh, etc. Uh, also, we appear in the media as well, uh, actively participating in, um, you know, uh, in what happens in the world. So as a student, you will be learning from really uh, expert uh, professors and lecturers in whatever field uh, you choose. So that good thing to keep in mind. And again, the year is, as I said, is intense. Uh, there's learning 24 hours because we live on in the learning environment itself. We eat on campus, sleep on campus, we learn on campus for a whole year. Um, during the first part of the year, the first term, um, mainly you will be exposed to um, like courses to enrich your um, basic conceptual understanding of um, politics, international relations, history, economy, law, etc. And in the next uh, uh, term, uh, you will choose whatever major you want from the four majors we presented. Um, and in the last few months, you will have time to write your thesis. Um, so basically, that's in a nutshell what I wanted to say. And uh, also, there is also the language part. I'm not sure. I'm afraid I think you touched on that. As a student, you will have the opportunity to learn new languages or maybe um, enrich whatever language you already know. Like you can learn French, even though like we are a bilingual um, uh, an institution teaching English and French. So there will be courses if your French is, um, for example, needs improvement. There will be courses which, where you can enroll and um, make a good uh, you know, progress in whatever language you want. Uh, most, we have a lot of languages, I'm not sure how many we have, at least 10 as far as I remember, if not more. Um, so in order to leave time for questions, I will stop here. So we have half an hour um, from now on, if anyone has any question 
Um, so go ahead and throw it and we'll try to uh, answer. Uh, actually, we, we will open the floor to the question, but after uh, Mr. Manifido finishes his uh, presentation regarding the scholarship provided by College of Europe, so we will open the floor for any queue uh, from the attendees. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Manfredi, you can yes. proceed. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Manfredi. Thank you very much, Dr. Badrag. I will go now to the more technical slides, really, so that um, we can also discuss that in the Q&A session. Um, uh, just, uh, just maybe just quickly, uh, but Dr. Badrag clearly already said it, uh, it's really a student and campus life at Natalin. I won't go too much into these slides, but in a typical year, just know that you would be living, let's say, with uh, five Germans, uh, 15 French, uh, 10 Italians, six Georgians, five Armenians. It's people coming from uh, over 30 countries, 130 students coming from over 30 countries. So it is a real melting pot, one in a once in a lifetime experience because uh, you really live with many different nationalities, many different cultures. And uh, as a former student, I can tell you it is exciting. Um, there are residencies, so you would live and it is, it is required for you to live on campus in our residences. It is a uh, high standard accommodation, single room with a toilet, private toilet. There's a, a restaurant, so a canteen open 24, uh, seven days a week giving uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, indoor and outdoor sports facilities. Just so you see, those are just a few photos of our, just some few photos of our uh, campus. It is in Warsaw. Um, Warsaw is a very dynamic city. Uh, in particular, our campus, and that's also worth you to note, our campus is in a 120 hectare nature reserve in uh, a south district of Warsaw, but it is still in Warsaw, so with the metro you can go anywhere to the center or outside the center. Uh, it is in uh, 120 hectare nature reserve. You can see some of, um, of the photos, some photos of our campus. Now, uh, just to go quickly through the last slides, you have until the 13th of January to apply, so it gives you still a little bit uh, of time. The applications were open since the 1st of October, and you have until the 13th of January to apply. The academic requirements. In order to apply to the College of Europe, uh, you need to have a Bologna master's degree or equivalent, which means you need to have 240 ECTS. However, you don't need to get those 240 ECTS by the closure of uh, the application. So you don't need to have those credits uh, by 13 of January. You need to have them um, by the end of the academic year at Natalie. So to be a little bit uh, clear on that, if you are doing a master or you are at your last year of university, and you are about to get the diploma or about to get the, those 240 ECTS, you can still apply if you won't get them in January, just upload your transcripts, upload uh, your previous degrees, your enrollment certificate, everything that will be required from you. And you can send us your diploma, your actual diploma uh, between even September and, uh, and December, to, in this case, 2021, right? Because the academic year starts in September 2021, so you don't need to have all of those. Uh, you don't need to have the diploma, your master diploma, uh, by uh, 13 of January, but you can have it uh, later. You need to have a, a level of English of minimum B2 and a French um, level of minimum A2 B1. However, uh, we accept also students who do not have these language uh, requirements yet, uh, we ask them to either, if they are accepted, of course, either participate in the Natoli Summer Language Academy, if they don't have this, uh, this level yet of French or English. The Natoli Summer Language Academy is a three weeks intensive, uh, intensive uh, program 
in, uh, in English and French courses. Uh, that usually happens in mid-August. Uh, or we ask uh, the student to uh, send us a certificate by the beginning of the academic year, so by September 2021. So, for example, uh, often French is the language that scares uh, students the most. If you don't have that level, you need to be committed in reaching at least an A2. And uh, if you really don't get that A2 during the interview, if you have an interesting uh, profile, then you may be accepted upon uh, the condition of uh, participating to the Natalie Summer Language Academy or delivering your certificate in September. Just uh, let's go, the fees at the College of Europe. So the college, of, the value of the College of Europe is 17,000 euros for the tuition fee and 9,000 euros for board and lodging fees. However, uh, we have, we have uh, many scholarships. We have our luck, in, let's say, is that we are a non-profit organization. We are financed uh, at more than 90% percent by the European Commission. So uh, de facto, between um, Bruges and Natolin, more than 70% of our students receive a partial or full scholarship. And this is also why one of the main reasons I'm uh, here, and we are here now presenting the, the college, we present also scholarship opportunities, which are many and, uh, and, and very important. So let, let me tell you what is our scholarship scheme at the College of Europe. We have uh, the ENP scholarships, both uh, for uh, EU citizens and for uh, ENP country citizens. So in your case, uh, if there are no uh, double nationality between, if, you are, if there are no EU citizens, uh, in your case, you would be considered ENP uh, citizens. Uh, those are full scholarships, only full scholarships, and they are awarded on the basis of uh, merit and motivation. So in practical terms, in the application portal of the College uh, of Europe, you have the possibility to apply for this ENP scholarship and you are uh, asked to write a motivation letter telling us why you want to uh, get this scholarship, why you, uh, do you have, you know, maybe if you have already a thesis proposal that it would be good to uh, put it in the in the motivation section and so the scholarship is going to be attributed on the basis of motivation and merit and by merit we mean the whole uh, profile of the student so the academic curriculum or professional curriculum uh, those ENP scholarships are valid both in Bruges and in Natalin so you can get them both in Bruges and in Natalin while the exclusive, exclusive scholarships that we have in Athens are the history scholarships. Uh, of course, I uh, forgot to mention, but I think it's self-evident, in order to get an EMP scholarship, you need to be really interested in uh, uh, the European neighborhood policy and, uh, and this one. In the Natolin, while the Natolin um, exclusive scholarships are the history scholarship, is uh, full or partial, it's for all nationalities, so also for, for Palestinian. And you need to be interested in, um, in history, especially history of Europe. Uh, either you are also a graduate in history or related disciplines, uh, either you are really interested uh, in, in the topic, you need to also write a motivation letter and it is based on uh, motivation and merit, like the UNP scholarship. Then we have a new scheme of scholarship, uh, the journalism scholarship. Uh, this is the first year we have it, uh, still full or partial. And if you are a journalist or so representative of communications and media centers, or you have a, a, a great interest in continuing your uh, professional career or start a professional career in journalism, uh, but it has to be really clear interest uh, that we can see from your profile, then you, you may be awarded one of these uh, journalism scholarships. The difference here is that the journalism scholarships are not, um, I mean, they're not attributed based on the motivation let, uh, letter. Uh, we don't have a section in our uh, portal where you can write 
your motivation to apply for these scholarships. We uh, attribute this scholarship uh, by uh, going through the profile of the candidate, and if we think you fit the profile for the journalist scholarship, you might get it. But there's no uh, separate section for that. However, of course, it may help to in the general motivation uh, letter on why you want to apply to the college. So the general motivation uh, section, that letter section, it may be useful to mention why. Uh, just uh, if you have background in general, journalism, to mention it there. Finally, you have. To, to join us, you need to apply, of course, and you need to apply to admissions.coreurope.eu. Uh, these informations are easily uh, reachable to our website, but just to let you know, it's admissions.coreurope.eu. You can choose up to two study programs. So it can be, let's say, uh, the, the European Interdisciplinary Studies program in Napoleon, and then one in Bruges, or just two in Bruges, or also the MATA. You can choose up to two study programs. You don't have to choose two. You can also choose only one. Then in the online application, you have to upload your CV in Europass format. Uh, you have to uh, upload your general motivation letter on why you want to study at the college. The scholarship application, so the, the motivation letter related to uh, scholarships. Diplomas, transcripts, and very important, two recommendation letters. Uh, this is the part that might be a bit longer and would require you to uh, to be quicker, let's say, in, this, in these days, because you need to have two recommendation letters from two professors or uh, at least one professor. And then if you cannot find a second professor to write a recommendation letter, then it can be uh, from um, an internship supervisor or a job supervisor, someone who knows you professionally, uh, who has worked you in, uh, in a professional, worked with you in a professional environment and that, um, and, uh, and that can recommend you in that sense. Then of course you have to send us the language proficiency certificates and there are no application fee. It is a free uh, process. And this is the pre-selection uh, process. Once you, you, you gather these documents, you send uh, the application, you are going through the pre-selection process. process. Uh, should you be pre-selected, then uh, you will be invited to uh, an interview with representatives of uh, the College of Europe. Uh, in, in your case, it's only with representatives of the College of Europe. Sometimes we have uh, interviews also with um, national uh, selection committees because uh, because there are we have some agreements. For example, the, just to give one example, with uh, the Foreign Ministry in Italy that gives scholarships to students. So in that case, the, the national selection committee would be present. But in your case, it's only with representatives of the College of Europe. And uh, this interview uh, is uh, both in uh, English and French. Is let's say uh, a small check also on your competencies in French. Uh, the final decision for the admission is is are, are going to be delivered between May June two thousand twenty one, and then um, the scholarship between May uh, July two thousand twenty one. Uh, I'm done. I just. Uh, would like to tell you that it may seem a very complicated process, but it is not. Uh, I mean, you, you still have to gather some documents. You still have to write some uh, documents about so write the motivation letter, find the professors for uh, the recommendation letter. But it is not that difficult once you you uh, you start doing it, and uh, it is a very prestigious prestigious uh, institution. You will see it everywhere in the web, but don't let yourself be intimidated by that. Uh, you can become a student here. Uh, uh, as a ENP uh, citizen, you know, or as a Palestinian citizen, you also have access to the ENP scholarships, which are full. Uh, it really changed also the life of many of, uh, of uh, my colleagues who who got scholarships you know, 
I got one scholarship as well to study at the college. It is a really great way to, to study abroad uh, for full year, uh, being also fully funded. And there we have many scholarships. That's why we really like to uh, to promote them because it's really sad when we cannot allocate them because maybe we don't have enough uh, uh, we don't have enough uh, applicants from uh, from certain countries. So we don't do not. Be, let, don't let yourself be intimidated by this whole process and really do, do apply because it's a great opportunity. And, uh, and I'm done and I think uh, I can give the floor to uh, Mr. Madri. Thank you so much for your good presentation. Actually, from your presentation, I can say that your campus is uh, is very active camp as you mentioned and Dr. Badarin has mentioned that you don't have to leave the campus because there are so many activities including webinars, uh, seminars, workshops, talk with the professional, with expertise. It's uh, actually a great opportunity for the students to, to gain knowledge and experience from uh, those uh, activities. And also I can say that you have an international camp you have around 30, 30 international students. You have uh, uh, is, uh, also a great opportunity for students open about what's going on uh, from our uh, uh, cultures. And I'm sure that uh, uh, since you have international students, you may provide them the some uh, conditions related to the, for example, to, to the, to the uh, culture, to the religion of each one, because I have one question uh, from the attendees uh, mentioned that uh, uh, is it available for female student uh, accommodation? Do you, do you provide a special uh, available uh, accommodation for female from male students or they can like in one building or one one condominium, for example. I, yes, I can answer that. Okay. Um, so the the residences on campus, there are two residences. Yeah. One is called Vlotkovich and one is called Ettinger. They provide uh, only single rooms. So so there's no. So it's a single room, private single room with private toilet. So there's no question of mm -hmm. that. Then there are, then there are um, some residences, also a few of them outside. So it's apartments and uh, it's uh, uh, only men and only women. So it's divided. Yes, 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 very, very good. And also I have one question for, me, for Dr. Badari related to the thesis. He mentioned that the student may have, for example, four months or three months to finish his thesis. It looks like it is not a big thesis. It will be like a, a, a small concentrated thesis because the time given to finish your thesis is like uh, not uh, one year or uh, five or six months. So you have to be very concentrated to finish your thesis. Dr. Dari, can you talk yeah. a little bit about yes. the structure um, of the, the thesis? Yeah. The thesis time is really short. The piece itself doesn't need to be long, as far as I remember, about 10,000 words or something like that. It's a focused piece. You have a research question, you try to answer that. Your, the supervisor, whatever supervisor the student choose, will help them on how to work on the thesis, how to choose the question, how to do the research and do the work. But what I, in my case, what I advise students is to start preparing for the thesis as soon as they can, even in the first semester. If you have a note, write it down. If you like, like you read something and there's an idea in that one, write it in your notebook. When the time comes at the end, basically in the last two or three months or in the second semester, you have a lot of material already in your notebook, which you can transform to your thesis. And that's why you save a lot of time and a lot of effort. 
So this is not a big word, but it's a very important part of the program. Um, so it has, I think, how many points? 20, I think 20 credits for the thesis on it's, itself, right? Mm. Uh, um, I'm not sure the way, but it has, it's, it's, it's a major part of the, um, the program itself. So it's, it's not, it's a short time, but it's doable. The, the supervisor will advise the student on the best way to fulfill their, um, you know, their, the, the, the demands of the thesis. So it's not a big thing. <clears throat> I hope so. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Uh, uh... Manifredo, I have one question related to the condition, uh, conditions of applying to the, to the scholarships. Uh, do the students require to find a supervisor in the, in the application process or just submit the documents without writing or email, send any emails to discuss about the topic for the thesis or to arrange with, with the supervisor? Is it necessary, for example, to do that or just submit the documents? Can you repeat uh, once again because they had an interference at some point? Yeah, my question is, during the application process, do the students need to discuss with supervisor in College of Europe related to particular topics? Uh, during the application process? Yeah. No, 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 no. During the application process, uh, it's only about um, uh, getting, the, getting accepted at the college based on the profile of the student, based on the application and on the interview. So the only contact mm -hmm. they might have uh, with uh, uh, the academia of the college during the application process is the interview. Uh, selection so it's going to be after the pre-selection then after that once they are accepted yes of course there is a lot of uh, uh, talking with academic supervisors for the thesis and so on but only after that mm -hmm. by the way I'm, I'm, I'm okay. seeing i'm seeing the i'm seeing the live as well on facebook so uh, it's uh, really nice i would like to thank also all the students who are commenting um the the presentation and I'm ready. I also see the question, so yeah. Okay, very nice, very nice. Uh, the last question is about um, uh, the, the, the limitation or the number of the scholarship that you provide to the Palestinian uh, students. Are these uh, numbers limited, for example, to three, four, five, or it is open to be competing with other students for this scholarship? Do you have any particular number of scholarships for students in Palestine or just let them compete with other students from all over the world? So we don't have uh, fixed numbers of scholarships based on nationalities. Mm. However, we do tend to diversify uh, our um, our student body. So um, it is always based on, of course, the scholarships are always based on merit and motivation. So if you are uh, um, uh, motivated and um, excellent, you know, Palestinian student, you you can be accepted, you know, without any problem. You wouldn't, I wouldn't say you would compete with all the other nationalities because we, we try to uh, diversify our student body, and in any case, we always had uh, students coming from Palestine in uh, every every promotion, almost every promotion. Let's say so. It is. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the main. Um, the, the competition is not is not declining this way. It's it's a bit different. We there are, there, there is no clear number of scholarships for, for for each nationalities, but we take care of diversifying the student body. So definitely okay. And let me also maybe, uh, because I was uh, seeing one one question okay. from uh, from a student. Let me just address it. Okay. Uh, the full ENP scholarship for uh, Palestinian and other ENP uh, citizens covers uh, both the expenses at the college, all of the expenses. So for one entire year, you wouldn't have to worry about uh, any expenses. Uh, 
at the college, of course, whatever you want to do outside is on you, but at the college, you wouldn't have to worry about any expense. And it also covers the flight uh, tickets to come uh, to the college and go back to Palestine. So I, I wanted to answer this question that was asked. Okay, thank you so much for your uh, good information. At this point, I have no any other questions. Uh, Dr. Badarin, if you want to add something before we close our session. You are uh, I would just uh, encourage you want students. to say something. Yeah, I would just encourage uh, the students to take this opportunity seriously and look into it and apply. And don't lose too much time, start now. Uh, see what's the, like the bureaucratic requirements, what documents are needed. Motivation letter, you can seek help from like for people. Uh, you can write it of course, but you can seek help also to make it, um, you know, uh, polished. Uh, try your best, write your, C do your CV, uh, the required documents, motivation letter, see your degree, um, whatever credits that are required, um, and apply. Take this opportunity seriously because it's really a good opportunity. I mean, it's one year intensive learning, living and learning in the same place um, here with us. So do that now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Manfredi, would you like to add something? No, just as, uh, as uh, Dr. Badai said, yes, uh, do apply, the scholarships are many. It's, uh, it's a great opportunity. I hope to see many applications from students of the Islamic University uh, of Gaza. And I would really like to uh, thank you a lot, Mr. Madi, and everybody, Professor Asafi, for giving us this opportunity uh, to um, present the scholarships and the academic offer and thank you to all the students following us also on the Facebook live for their um, for their kind uh, questions and attention to the presentation. Thank you so much on behalf of uh, international affairs at the Islamic University of Gaza I would like to thank you so much for your time and for your effort to promote such a scholarship and to give a small introduction about the College of Europe and hope we can uh, uh, receive some applications from our uh, students to your college and uh, to gain the experience from uh, the College of Europe. Again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your uh, valuable information and hopefully we can meet again in another session. I also, I would like to thank for those who are joining us virtually. Thank you so much and see you again yes. in another webinar. Thank maybe you. One, maybe yes. one last thing I, I would like to ask maybe um, uh, Mr. Madi, if, yes. uh, if you could uh, copy paste those links I put in the chat on Zoom in the, the, the yes. Facebook chat, uh, Facebook comments, because I think they may be useful. Okay, I, I will make the links Other that ones. you mentioned uh, on the chat box available to all the students. So thank you in case of any uh, okay. questions, any clarification okay. from their side. Again, thank you. Thank you so much. And see you, inshallah, thank in you. next webinars. Have, have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too. Have a good day. Bye-bye.